In Star Trek the original series episode titled Balance of Terror, there is quite a lot going on. When you first see the episode, one may think of two captains trying to outsmart or outwit the other. Perhaps like a World War II battle between enemy submarines portrayed in the movies. Attempting to use stealth and strategy, including radio silence and locations. But if you dig deeper into the episode, you can uncover more beneath the surface. The story starts to reveal issues like prejudice and ignorance. The stereotyping and hatred directed towards an unknown enemy starts to become apparent. The horrors of war are exposed, as well as the futility of fighting primarily for glory. Incidentally, glory is not a good reason for starting a war or conflict, and it is shown in the episode to fail. This episode would also be the first time that the Romulans would make an appearance and be seen. The original treaty was created through subspace radio, so no visual contact was ever seen. This episode would also be the first time we would be treated to see Mark Leonard. He would play the Romulan commander. Later on in the episode Journey to Babel, he would be portraying Mr. Spock's father, Sarek, who is also the ambassador from Vulcan. Mark Leonard would also go on to portray a Klingon commander in Star Trek The Motion Picture as well as reprising his role of Sarek in Star Trek The Next Generation. Sadly, he would pass away in 1996, but his character portrayals will live on forever. Star Trek had started to include storylines or issues at the time of the writing the episodes and transferring them to future situations and timelines. At the time of the writing of Balance and Terror, around that time the United States was involved in the Cuban Missile Crisis in 1960. President Kennedy and Nikita Khrushchev would engage in a testing of wills, and the lives of many would hang on what each leader would do next. The incident would be peacefully ended, and these events would inspire the conflict being echoed in the episode Balance of Terror. The irony of war is exposed also, as despite individual differences, enemies are usually discovered to be the same on both sides. Balance of Terror premiered on December 14, 1966, and was in Season 1, Episode 14. On Stardate 1709.2, we are introduced to a wedding ceremony aboard the Enterprise. Captain Kirk would officiate the wedding of Lieutenant Robert Tomlinson, portrayed by Stephen Mines, and Angela Martine, portrayed by Barbara Baldavin. As the ceremony began, it would be interrupted by the ship going into red alert. Upon contacting the bridge, Captain Kirk is informed by Mr. Spock that Earth Outpost Number 4 reports that they are under attack by an unknown space vessel. Captain Kirk orders the ship full ahead with all decks on condition red. The Enterprise would race to the area to investigate and assist. The Earth Outpost's purpose is to monitor the neutral zone between the Federation and the Star Romulan Empire. The peace treaty between the Federation and the Romulans was established by Substace Radio. There was no visual communication at the time, so the two sides had never seen the other. Warlike, cruel and treacherous are the words that describe the Romulans from the Federation's point of view. The treaty is what established the neutral zone and it had been stated that entry by either side into the area would constitute an act of war. Captain Kirk would inform the crew that preservation of the peace treaty would be top priority and if necessary both themselves, the Enterprise, or crew and the outposts would be considered expendable. Lieutenant Stiles would inform the captain that the most likely attacker would be the Romulans and that you would know them by their ships being like a giant bird of prey. He would inform the captain that his family fought in the war before the peace treaty was established. Captain Kirk was quick to point out to him that that was their war that they fought, not his. The Enterprise would reach Outpost 2 first. Sensors would indicate that Outpost 2 and 3 were totally destroyed, as well as the asteroids they were constructed on. 
Captain Kirk would order red alert with all hands to battle stations as well as phasers being fully charged. The Enterprise would then approach Outpost 4 and establish contact with Commander Hansen. Hansen would inform the Enterprise that Outposts 2, 3, and 8 have all been destroyed. He would speak of the subspace interference and visual communication would be established with Hansen and he would inform the Enterprise that they were a mile deep on the asteroid and despite the deflectors raised, the enemy vessel damaged the outpost to the point that one more attack would totally destroy them. He described the attack as a high energy plasma that was fired from a ship and it disappeared soon after firing. Hansen would indicate the ship was back and switched to visual. The Enterprise tried to warn off the ship but they would not acknowledge communications and they would fire on the outpost and as a result outpost 4 would also be destroyed. Captain Kirk would have Lieutenant Uhura contact the remaining outposts and put them on notice and to contact them if they see any ships or activity. A blip would show up on Mr. Spock's sensors and it was taking the heading 111 Mark 14 which was the exact heading a Romulan ship would take to return home. Captain Kirk would order to follow in a parallel course to match speed and location of the Romulan ship, acting as a reflection or an echo. The Enterprise would then intercept a communication from the Romulan ship. Mr. Spock would be able to tie it in and establish a visual signal of inside the Romulan ship. And as the bridge of the enemy ship appeared on the view screen, the Enterprise crew was shocked to discover that the Romulans looked very much like Mr. Spock and the Vulcans. Lieutenant Stiles suggested that there could be Romulan spies aboard the Enterprise and starts to show hostility towards Mr. Spock. This included a comment he made in the breaking of the Romulan code. Stiles would say, give it to Spock, in a sarcastic measure. Captain Kirk would then inform Stiles to keep his bigotry in his quarters and that there was no room for it on the bridge. Then, later at extreme range, the Enterprise would see the Romulan ship and they would continue to match speed and direction of it. We are introduced to the Romulan commander in the bridge of the Romulan ship. His crew would think that they had a reflection but the commander knew it was an Earth ship. They would use their cloaking device once again even though the device was heavy on the power and would drain the power quickly. The commander was also upset that a message was dispatched by a member of his crew. The crewman said it was only in code and he informed the Praetor of the success of the mission. And as a result the commander would reduce him two steps in rank. The commander would inform the Centurion his plan on destroying the Earth ship when they would attack. He would also present the victory and the weakness of the Earth ship to the Praetor as a gift for another war. He would also confide that he secretly wished for destruction but would inform the Centurion to not to worry that he was too well trained in his duties to permit it. In the briefing room, debris from Outpost 4 would be analyzed. It would be discovered that a weapon of immeasurable power could turn the outpost defenses which were made of castrogenium which was the hardest substance known to the Federation and Mr. Spock was able to crumble it in his hand. Mr. Spock would analyze the weapon as being an envel enveloping energy plasma forcing an implosion. It would be discovered that the Enterprise was inferior to the Romulan vessel weapon wise. But Mr. Scott would add that the propulsion system was simple impulse power of the Romulan ship. To the speed and maneuverability, the edge would go to the Enterprise, and Mr. Stiles asked if it would be used for attacking or retreating. Captain Kirk asked his opinion, and Stiles said they must attack. Lack of doing so would be taken as a guarantee for war with the Romulans. Mr. Spock would agree, shocking them all, and Captain Kirk would later order an intercept course with the Romulan vessel while they were still in Federation space. The Romulan ship would change course towards a comet that was a magnitude 7 comet, which was an ionized mass with vapor particles trailing it. Captain Kirk would suggest being able to see an object passing through the vapor trail, so he would order red alert as the ship went to battle stations on an intercept course. 
We would later find out that the maneuver by the Romulan vessel was a trap to get the Enterprise to attack, so it can turn and attack the Enterprise. Once the Enterprise started an intercept pattern, the Romulan commander would order escape maneuver one. Instead, the Enterprise would not see the ship passing through the comet's trail and realize it was a trap. Captain Kirk would order a course change to hard to starboard and ordered a blind firing of the phasers. The Romulan ship would be damaged in an attempt to save the commander. The Centurion would be trapped under falling debris and pass away later. The commander would order all power to weapons. While firing the phasers, the Enterprise would encounter a phaser overload that would take them offline while they were repaired. That is when the Romulan ship would appear and fire the dreaded weapon. Captain Kirk would order full to stern with emergency warp speed and eventually come to realize that the Romulan weapon had a limited range as it began to dissipate. The Romulan ship would then change course back to 111 Mark 14 towards home. The Enterprise would return to a course matching speed and position of the Romulan ship. The Romulan ship would detect them and re-engage the cloak. Before heading to the neutral zone, Captain Kirk would order full ahead to attack while still in Federation space. The Romulan commander would order an evasive action maneuver, but when the Enterprise fired, it would still damage the Romulan ship again. Captain Kirk would send a message that he was entering into the neutral zone on his authority and in his opinion, there was no other option. The Romulan commander would order debris into the disposal tubes, including the body of the deceased Centurion. Mr. Spock would conclude that discovered debris was insufficient mass, meaning it could not be the remains of a starship. The Romulan ship would then come to a full stop and the sensor blip would disappear on the Enterprise scanners. Mr. Spock would conclude that they had lost the ship. In a game of cat and mouse, the Enterprise would come to a stop as well and wait for the blip to reappear. While doing so, while doing repairs in the station, Mr. Spock would accidentally hit the signal button while getting back up. The Romulan ship would read the signal and move in to attack. Sensing this, Captain Kirk would order power to be back on and reverse course. He would also order phasers to be fired, and this would cause the Romulan ship more damage. The Romulan commander would order more debris into the disposal tubes. He would also put a nuclear type warhead into the debris with a fuse. The Enterprise would encounter the debris and Mr. Spock would point out that there was one metal encased object. Captain Kirk would order phasers to fire point blank, which would detonate the device. The, the resulting explosion would make the Enterprise appear to be motionless and they would stay that way in an attempt to lure the Romulan ship back into their side of the neutral zone to attack. The phaser room would discover a leak of phaser coolant when the Romulan ship would appear for attack. Lieutenant Stiles would be in the phaser room assisting Tomlinson when the coolant leak would be discovered. Stiles and Tomlinson both would be succumbed to the coolant, leaving no one to fire when the captain's orders were being called. Mr. Spock would return to the room and fire the phasers, which would disable the Romulan ship for good. Sadly, Tomlinson would be the only casualty reported as a result of inhalation of the coolant leak. Once the Romulan ship was disabled, Captain Kirk ordered a visual communication. The Romulan commander said he regretted that he had met Captain Kirk through the current circumstances. Also that in a different reality, he could have called him friend. Captain Kirk informed him to prepare to beam survivors aboard the Enterprise and abandon his ship. Instead, the Romulan commander said that they were creatures of duty and that he only had one more duty to perform. He initiated the self-destruct, destroying himself and his ship. The destruction of the Romulan ship would preserve the peace between the Romulan Empire and the Federation.